Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing today? One second here. Where's the music? Where's the music? There's the music. There we go. There we go. How's everyone doing today? Uh, shoot. Do I have an address on that? No. I don't think we're good. A box showed up just before I went live, and I have no idea what it is. Um, so since I don't have any plans today in terms of what content we're doing, we'll see. <laughs> Label off. Don't want people knowing where I live. Yeah, package just showed up just before I went live. It's not exactly the thing I'm waiting on. I'm waiting on a couple things, actually, and I'm hoping they show up before. Okay, what's going on with my ISO? Why aren't you remembering my ISO value? There you go. Remember the ISO value. Um, yeah, hi. So today is the stream before Rocky Mountain. So usually, um, anytime there's an event that I'm traveling to, the stream before the event, I really don't do anything. Um, I don't want to get into a build or like, usually we just, we, we put the stream aside just to chat and get things ready. Um, I've got pretty much everything packed. I went and got a haircut. Every time I get a haircut, it disturbs myself and it, it breaks my fragile ego because the hairline moves further north every time I get a haircut. And that's why we hide it under the hat because, uh, you know, how you cope with stuff is you ignore it. Uh, Fabrico, cheers, how you doing? Since we have nothing, it's 12 o'clock somewhere. I promise I won't tell. I have a bottle on that shot for shot. Let's do this. I, I might have one shot. Ready? Ready? Right? No. I gotta go pick up the little, you know what? There. Get going. I got three hours before I gotta go. I gotta drive. Now I need a drink. Straight shot of whiskey at 11 a.m. is usually not a, not a good way to start the day. Actually, it's always a good way to start the day. There we go. There we go. Uh, turkey flight? Why turkey? Drinking out. You can drink on stream. YouTube's got nothing against stream. My brother in Christ, every like Saturday night we have a drink. <laughs> um, so yeah, so what's going on? Um, Thursday I'm flying out for Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest. Um, so this will be the last regular stream for the week um there i'm gonna try every time i go to an event i try to do a live stream at the event um wi-fi and communications permitting um yeah we try to do a stream at every event i don't know exactly what time it will be most likely if i do do a stream it might be on the sunday just going off of how previous rep rap fests have gone usually the saturday is usually a gong show in terms of it's just packed and Sunday is the less busy day. So if I do do a stream, um, I'll probably do it on the Sunday just because there's more room to walk around. It's not as crazy busy. Um, you dropped a video for me in Discord. Let's see here. There we go, Shammy. Woo! And the party started. <laughs> I'm, please, I'm not encouraging alcohol consumption. If, please only consume consume what you're legally allowed to in moderation. Um, <laughs> so, Shammy, that's you on the Fabrico account then. <laughs> uh, Positron here to flip the stream upside down. Whoop! Also, hey, uh, PSA, don't buy Funzor kits. Uh, they're basically riding on the coattails of, of Positron, saying they're affiliated. Um, they have nothing to do with Positron. They haven't worked together at all. And their kits are shit, apparently. Um, build quality, crap. Uh, part quality, crap. Everything's mismachined. I don't know. They, uh, here, read, read this. There you go. So yeah, if, you, if you're looking for a Positron kit, don't buy a Funzor one. Um, TLDR. There you go. Put the word out. So, um... But yeah, what I can't put the word about, what you can get though, 
is Polymaker Filament, because every stream we give away a spool of Polymaker Filament. Link in the video description, enter for your chance to win. Um, and also while you're down there, don't forget to check out the other links. Uh, some of them are affiliate links, don't cost you anything extra, go a long way in supporting the channel. And also, if you do want to help support the channel, the content I create and the things I do, consider becoming a channel member, Patreon supporter, or if you're really cool, gifting memberships to others, because it allows me to do the things I do and create the content I create. Um, because I'm about to drop a bunch of money on flights and hotel to San Francisco for open sauce tomorrow, probably, if I can get everything sorted out. I'm waiting on one confirmation. I'm waiting on, I'm waiting on a thumbs up from one group before I do that. So, so today, um, your previous streams is your fault. I picked up a Mark IV and enclosure. It's a good thing. I like my Mark IV and enclosure. It does what it needs to do exactly as it needs to do it. Um, once I have unofficial kits for the Ender 3 NG that I was looking at, might have to avoid them. I'm not speaking about Funzor in other regards. I don't know how their other kits are. I, I, I don't think I have any personal experience, but I'm just repeating uh, what Positron is saying. And anytime a community takes advantage of an open source group, um, especially like open source groups that don't do stuff for profit or whatever, um, anytime I see communities taking advantage of, of, of you know, communities that really, they can't really defend themselves because unfortunately most open source groups can't afford lawyers, let's be honest. Um, I, I get really peeved about it. So as somebody who's a member of the Voron design team, um, it, it's, it, it happens. Um, what is the top flow of, you have hit on your X1C? Whatever the profiles max out at, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't run my machines at the ragged edge. Your, your car can do 100 and, you know, my, my Subaru could do 180, you know, kilometers an hour. I never drive it at 180. I don't know. I've, I've, I've actually got the stock hot end in there because I had a, a Revo um, high flow hot end in there, um, but it jammed on me. <laughs> um, so I got the stock one in there. I don't know, whatever the stock one is. I, I've i got multitudes of printers, so I don't have to run any of them at the crazy ragged edge of speed. I'd rather run them, you know, for consistent results. Um, so today is just going to be, we're, I, I don't know, I got this box showed up. We're going to go through this box. It's from Big Tree Tech. We'll see what it is. Um, and then we're just going to go over what stuff I'm bringing to Rocky Mountain, plans and whatnot. Today's just going to be a chill day. Um, I'm not building anything because we're waiting until after Rocky Mountain to do that. We probably will print something, but today's just an easy chilling day. Having shrinking issues with HD2 armor parts again. Polymaker ABS was... 20, 20, what what do you mean shrinking issues? Like, are you talking about, um, oh, we'll probably end up sanding today because I got to get working on this armor. Are you talking about like parts that are supposed to fit together, not fitting together? Or like you, you scaled it and it's not fitting your head type thing. Uh, okay, but anyways, let's see what's in this box. Let me turn the camera on. So uh, apparently this is from Big Tree Tech. It's got batteries in it. It's got a lithium battery. Um, I don't know what's in here. Oh, a t-shirt. Okay, I got a t-shirt. I've got foam or foam. Wow, meat fail, English. I got bubble wrap. And a box for makers by makers. Kraken. The Kraken. I have a Kraken. Why do they say batteries on the box? Is there a battery in here? Got the, the black ducky. USB cable. Oh, it's one of these. Okay. So Big Tree Tech it did a, a batch of um, custom Krakens, I guess. They didn't reach out to me about this. This just showed up. So this is the first I'm seeing it. I didn't even know I was getting one of these. Um, so instead of Kraken, they did like, so I'm, I'm, I'm Canuck Creator now. So it's Canon. And then like other people got like heart can heart and and whatever. So they just they took like the first couple, like the first syllable or the first uh is it syllable? Yeah, syllable. Um no. Yeah, first syllable. Um and added N. Yeah, so Pulo got a pool N. So I have another crack in. What am I gonna put this in? <laughs> what am I gonna put this in? Um I got half of mine to put it in the, the VZ bot. 
I'm, I've got half a mind to put it in the VZ bot. No, no, as, as the kitties say, no capping for real, for real. Uh, simply for the fact that the VZ bot has like an octopus plus those four external drivers. Um, and it would be nice to slim it all down into just a Kraken. We could do that. Or I could put it on the ANET A8. That would be funny. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's cool. Uh, the can N board. What steppers are on the VZBot? It's the same. So the VZBot has 5160s. This is 5160s. The, the thing is with the VZBot, um, the VZBot has external steppers. So it has an octopus and then it has four breakout steppers for 5160s. Whereas the octopus is just the octopus and it's all one single unit. So it might be better. Like a salad fork. I do have a salad fork. Um, the MP Delta. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'll figure out, I'll find something for it. That's cool. Thank you, Big Tree Tech. I didn't know that was coming. I, I saw other people got one and I'm like, well, they didn't say, say they were sending me anything. So I'm assuming I'm not getting one, but then, hey, I got one. That's cool. You're gonna put it yours in your Micron. <laughs> The Kraken's a great board. The thing is the Kraken is way over spec for a lot of stuff. This is designed with a uh, Phoenix in mind, which is uh, Quad Nema 23 X Core XY Delta or Core XY IDEX uh, machine. So putting it on like, I, I have one in a normal V2 and it's overkill. Um, it's really good, but it is overkill. I don't know why it said batteries on it. Why did the box have battery warnings? Um, so what shirt did I get? I got a 2XL, which I think these are Chinese sizes, so that might work. Ooh, this is how you know the shirt's good. It's got... It's got sunshine bright color. Sunshine bright color. <laughs> uh, what is this? T-shirt. Ooh, maybe that's why... Maybe that's why this, the box had all kinds of stickers for batteries on it. Because <laughs> they, they just use a piece of cardboard to cut for the shirt. Uh, there you go. Big tree tech. That's it. Oh, that's a nice shirt. That's a cool shirt. And it, it's it's got, it's it's almost like an Under Armour material. I might bring this. I'm going to bring this. I want to bring this to Rocky Mountain. Yeah, there you go. Throw it through the wash tonight. Pack it. There we go. Thanks, Big Tree Tech. I've got a shirt. I've got a shirt. I've got a shirt. I don't have to do laundry for another day. Uh, Canuckin. Yeah, it should have been Canuckin. Or, like, I'm surprised I didn't go with Nero. Um, but considering how... How, how do I... Rotating door uh, PR people are. Every time I talk to somebody from a lot of these companies, it's a different person. So I don't know if it's because a lot of them... Obviously, they're not using the real name. If I get a if I get a contact, if I get an email from a Chinese company and it's like, "Hi, my name's Felicia," and it's you know obviously Google Translate English, I know your name's not Felicia. Um, so I don't know if it's because they just you know a name of the week type thing or what. But only twenty of those custom Krakens exist. Cool. Doesn't the Kraken have a button battery on it? Does it? I forgot to look. I don't think it does, because it doesn't have an MC, it, it's only an MCU. It doesn't have a Raspberry Pi equivalent on it. Um, yeah, I don't see a battery. Yeah, there's no battery on it. It's for lithium on. I honestly think they put that because Customs opened the box and saw the, the, the cardboard with batteries on it that was in the, in the t-shirt. That's probably why. Upgrade the Milo uh, with 60 volt stepper motors. Uh, no. <laughs> can you can you run duet web control on uh, a Kraken? I mean... I gotta do some actual, I gotta, I actually, I've done a few test cuts, um, but I haven't done much with the Milo because I'm learning how to do cam. Um, I, 
I want to machine myself a aluminum Helldivers buckle with the Helldivers logo on it uh, for the, the Helldivers cosplay I'm working on. So um, I've been learning cam, so I haven't been really doing a lot because like, yeah, I, I, I can do basic stuff, but I, I want to learn like proper stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm learning. Um, so that's why we haven't done a lot with the Milo since we built it is because I got to learn how to do cam and I'm, I don't like learning stuff like that on stream. So, um, that's why. And also with getting ready for Rocky Mountain, and it, it's, it's getting nice again. So I have to do stuff around the house. So I just, it's, it's this, we'll play with that after I come back from Rocky Mountain kind of thing. Um, one second here. Hey, don't go, you gotta move, you gotta move. Gotta move. Somebody at the door? No. Oh, wife's home. That's who it was. I'm like, I heard something at the door. And it's just the wife. Um, want help? I got a few videos. Don't worry. Uh, an English name. I know. I, 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 when I worked at the tool shop, my, my team leader was Hong Kong Chinese. Um, and he came over like 20 years ago and he's in his like 50s. So he, he, he grew up there. He spent most of his life there. And I'm pretty sure the name he told us wasn't his name, but that's what we called him. Random question on 2.4 R2. What's the typical amperage draw on a 300 stock build, if you know offhand? I don't. Um, it, during print operations, a couple amps, like two to three. Um, during heat up, it's a bit more. But during print operations, like two to three amps, at least according to the UPS I had. I can't remember exactly. Um, so yes, Rocky Mountain is coming up uh, this week. So let's, uh, Ari, you going to Rocky Mountain? Let's do a poll there just to, to get that engagement going. Um, so yeah, Rocky Mountain's coming up and I'm traveling to it. So Thursday I'm flying out. Um, I won't be back till Monday. So obviously no regular stream Friday or Saturday. Saturday. Um, probably no video this week, just because I'm getting ready for stuff. Um, if I do do a video, it'll be a short. Um, I'm going to try and do a bunch of shorts while at Rocky Mountain. And obviously, I'm going to be recording stuff for videos. Um, so if, if you are going to Rocky Mountain showing something off and you want me to do a video on it, just hit me up, let me know, and I'll do a video on it. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to do videos on things I think are cool. Um, am I going to the dinner? What dinner? There's a few dinners. I've been invited to several of them. Obviously, I'm, I can only go to one, so we'll see. Um, do, do, do. As I mentioned, they just declare the battery on package, so if customs x-rays it, they think it's something that doesn't matter. Okay, that, that can make sense. Um, there we go. But flights are expensive. That's what Smurf's for, so you can go to Smurf at least. Um, any good events in the Midwest? Like, like okay. As a non-American, what is the Midwest? That's like Chicago area, right? That's like not East Coast, but not like it, it's 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 east of the Mississippi, but not East Coast, right? That's Midwest. So like, let me pull up a map here. I'm not American, so when you, you, your American terms, maps, Google Maps. Oh no, F off. Da, 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 da. Scroll out, scroll out, like, like. This is Midwest, right? Th this area right here, this is Midwest, right? Because it, it's it's the mid and it's... But it, you think it would be Mid-East? Because if this is the middle of the U.S., this would be the Mid-East. But either way. Um, yeah, there's Midwest Rep Rap Fest, um, which I probably, at this point, I'm still saying I'm going to. Um, but if, I'm, I'm, if I do end up going... Uh, it's gonna be short. I'm just gonna go for like the weekend, just the Saturday and Sunday. Like leave Saturday morning, go there, spend the night, come back Sunday after the event. Um, just because it's how do I how do I word this friendly? Merv seems very dated compared to the other Rep Rep Fest. I don't know. I don't know if it's just location or just the venue. Um, I like going there. I got nothing against the people that hold it. It's a great time. I go there mostly just to hang out with the people that go there. Like last year, like I did one video from it and I tried to live stream and it failed. Um, it, it, it's, I don't know. I, Rocky Mountain's gonna be the big one. I think Rocky Mountain's the big one. And then 3D Printopia is, is its 
own thing, I think, at this point. And it's pretty good because it's in it's it's over here. So we got we got Rocky Mountain over here. We got Midwest Rep Rep Fest over here. And then we have um, uh, 3D Printopia, which is formerly East Coast Rep Rep Fest over here. And then we got Smurf over here. And then um, Open Sauce is over here. And I'm hoping if I can get one more sponsor, we're good. Um, I'm going, I, I, I'll say it now, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start booking tickets and hotels. Um, but hopefully I can get another sponsor because it, it got it gets expensive quick. It gets expensive quick for San Francisco. Holy shit. 3D Printopia is close to Philly. Are you in Philly? That's where uh, Cocoa Press is, isn't it? Or at least close to that area. Or just hang. Yeah, Murph is just like last year when I went, it was just to go hang out with people. It was just to see people I know and just hang out. Like. Ugh. So what am I bringing? I, I've got my clothes packed. The only thing, I, I might bring a coat. I'm, I was hoping I didn't need to bring a coat, but the weather is looking like rainy, like 50 and rainy kind of thing. So I was hoping I could just like go with sweaters, which is how I roll. Um, I mean, I was, I was tempted to put shorts on yesterday, but it's going to be chilly in, in Denver. Um, so I, I, I've got everything packed and I swear this is like the least amount of stuff I'm bringing to an event I'm covering. Um, I don't have a Gatorade in my bag. Oh, I brought it for the Eclipse, that's right. Um, but it should be fine. That's my plan. Nope, these aren't mine. What else do I have in here? Oh, it's, I forgot. I brought this bag when we went for the Eclipse, so I brought like a change of clothes for the little guy and whatnot. I'm like, why do I have pants? Why do I have Calvin pants in here? Okay, are we good? We're good. So yeah, uh, so what do I bring? I'm, I'm gonna go through what I'm bringing because um, I got, this is new. This is this is my entire YouTube. This is it. This is all I'm bringing for equipment for recording YouTube videos right here. This. I, I, I've optimized everything down to a single this. <laughs> what are these called? Container, box, holder. Um, these aren't mine. <laughs> I gotta get more pins. I, I lost my Revo pin. I gotta get a new Revo pin for Coco Print. What is this? Oh, my Eclipse glasses. By the way, I, I never showed you guys the Eclipse footage I recorded. So we'll, we'll, we'll go through that. Um, Midwest states were brought into the US. It was called the Northwest Territories. Well, see, for me, I'm Canadian. So Northwest Territories is um, the Northwest Territories. <laughs> Voron booth. Oh, dude. Okay. Let's pull up. Let's pull up Rocky Mountain. So let's pull up the website. So while we're doing that, while that's loading, um, which like it's already loaded, but I'm using that as a segue. Let's talk about what I bring to events. So I think Stefan is going. He is going. So I can finally give him this because I brought this a Smurf. Um, and he, they, they, the, 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 the Germans got snowed in. So they couldn't make it. So I'm bringing this. This is a, um, this is Peck, P-E-K-K. -K. This is Peck printed on Toasty Boy. So I'm bringing this for Stefan so he could do it on his little tester thing. Okay, um, I got that. I've got generic headphones for the flight. Um, leave room for a Steam Deck. Yeah, I know. I, I've got so much room this year. It's ridiculous compared to previous years. Um, um, lens cleaners. I, I, I just keep a ton of these in my bag because I wear glasses for one. Uh, but this is like clean camera lenses and whatnot. So bring these. They're always good to have. Um, I This is the battery bank I keep in my bag because I run a uh, USB-C through my bag. So this this one lives in the bag. It's not a high speed charger. It actually is a shit charger, <laughs> uh, but it's 20,000 milliamps and it's good for trickle charging. Um, that's about it. <laughs> so it, it's good for that, but that's about it. And also it's dead, I gotta charge it. Um, but this is the, uh, the charger I use for, um, like if I'm in the airport type thing. So this lives in this bag. 
but it's dead, so I gotta charge it. So let me find a USB cable. Uh, USB cable, USB cable. I know I, how do I not have a USB cable? I got a million USB cables. Here are a USB cable. Yes, you are. Input. Okay, so let's, let's charge you. Is that a dongle? How many, how many, what's your output? Five volt, one milliamp. One amp, yeah, whatever, I'll charge it. Just let that go. Uh, we're, yeah, 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 unplug you. There you go. Are you, are you charging? You're charging. Go. Um, if you have filament storage bags, you can use that for vacuum seal. I know. Uh, get a portable jump starter. Rental sometimes are not in the best condition. I'm not renting a vehicle. Um, last year I rented a vehicle and I'll be honest, it was the biggest waste of money ever. Um, because I rented a vehicle that I drove from the Denver airport to the hotel. I parked it and then it sat there all weekend. And then on the Monday, I drove it back to the hotel or back to the airport. That was it. So this year I'm lucky and I'm uh, hitching a ride. So I don't have to worry about that. Considering, um, I'm at the hotel, it's like right next to the venue, which a lot of people are at, but it's right across the street. I, I always try to book hotels next to the event I'm going to, because I hate having to commute. I'm hoping it's allergies, because I've been sneezing like crazy today, and I don't feel sick, and I don't have a runny nose, so I'm hoping it's allergies, but the thing is that I'm worried about, I don't have allergies. So, who am I hitching a ride with? You don't need to know. That's what Uber is for. You want to know something funny? I've never used Uber, ever. I, I, I've never used Uber, ever. I, where I live, we don't have Uber. I, I have a car. Um, every time I travel to somewhere, I just use a cab or somebody else. Like I don't, I don't use Uber. I don't know. It's 160 Uber ride. The hotel is booked up. Oh, I bet. I bet. I, that's why I booked a while ago. Um, cheers to LDO for my uh, micro HDMI adapter thingy. From that. But yeah, this this is my entire recording kit for the event. Um, so this is the first time I've used this in a few videos just to test it. Uh, but this is everything. This is the. Here, let me move that over. Zoom you out. There we go. This is this is all I'm bringing to record for events, and I think this is the most compact, efficient uh, thing you can do. Um, so it's DJI. No, I hate DJI as a company. They make good shit, uh, but the way they do data hoovering and the way they enforce the way like I hate companies that tell you the way you have to use their product, and DJI is one of those companies. Um, however, they make good shit. So it's kind of like F you, but I'm take my money. Um, so this is the DJI Pocket Osmo 3. Um, it is a uh, basically an action cam on a gimbal. And do I hate Apple? Yeah, I think they're they're massively overpriced and they're full of their, they're 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 full of themselves. They make good stuff. I just think they screw you over because they they know you'll 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 bend over and take it. Like the fact that they still, you know, their base, their starting at prices are jokes because it's 256 gigs of, of storage and eight gigs of RAM, which is pathetic in today's day and age. And there's no absolute excuse for that. Other than the fact that you're a gullible, willing uh, participant in the thing. So anyways, this is a gimbal. So when I go like that, ooh, it does that and it looks at me. And then if I push this button, it looks at you and it's a gimbal. Woo. Isn't that cool? So it's really cool. It, it's got like, this is a battery and then it has, this is also a battery and it's got a little tripod. Boop. So this is all I'm bringing. <laughs> this is all I'm bringing. And then to turn it off. Oh, look, you just, you just turn the screen over and it goes into a park position. And then I put it in here. I take that off and it goes back in its case. 
and that's it. So that has a better image sensor than the GoPro. It's got a built-in gimbal, so you don't have to do uh, digital image stabilization, which again, I shake. Um, and then I also, once I got the creator combo, it comes with a mic, and then I bought another mic. So these are my two labs, my two wireless labs that I like to use for one on me, one on whoever I'm talking to. But the advantage with these is they sync directly with the pocket two or pocket three. So you don't need a receiver. So I just turn these on and they connect because the biggest problem I had with the GoPro is anytime I, I used it for an event, every time I would come back and there'd be at least one interview where the audio didn't record. And it was only like onboard audio. Uh, do I have a tripod? No. Usually, I find I don't use the tripod. I, I have my tripod. This is my tripod. It's a, uh, a Cobra 2. Is it Cobra 2 or Cobra 3? Cobra 2, I think. It's an iFootage Cobra 2. Um, I love this tripod. It's a monopod, not a tripod. Um, it's, it's, it's quick to set up. It's stable. It is compact. Um, I wish it was more compact. I wish you could break it down. Like, you can break it down... Uh, so the base comes off and then the top comes off, which I don't know where I have the top at. Oh, it's right here. So this has got a quarter inch thread, so you can screw this into something and then that sticks on. So you could break, but the problem is this doesn't fit in anything. So I have to like strap it on my bag and bring it through airport security. It's annoying. Um, and then I only end up using it like once or twice when I go to an event, because most of the time I just end up holding the camera. So I'll do, you know, I'll do the intro where it's like, you know, I'm standing next to the person. Hey, we're at, you know, Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Fest. We're here with, you know, E3D, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's talk. Okay, so show me what you got. Cool, blah, 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 blah. That's how I record. Um, because the problem is with a tripod or a monopod is you have to set it up and then it's gotta be in a position where it can capture everything in frame in a crowded convention where people are walking around bumping into it. Um, so I probably won't bring the tripod this year. Um, I really like it. I probably will bring this to events where I travel by vehicle, but for, since I'm flying, this is three pounds and a stick I don't have to bring. Simple as that. It sets up really nice, like, boom, set up. Da, da, da. And, it, and with a with a small camera on it, it's stable enough. The problem is if somebody bumps it, it's gone. Um, and I have to bring it with me everywhere. Like I brought this to Rocky, I brought this to uh, Smurf. I don't think I actually used it in a single video. I, I, I think most of the time I just went handheld. It's just, it's easier. Um, so I don't think I'm bringing it. I like it. I will keep using it. I just don't think I'm bringing it uh, for this event this year. Um, and then what else do I have in here? So I've got that, I've got this, which is a, uh, a 10,000 milliamp, uh, battery pack, battery bank. I got it cause it's small, it's compact and it fits in here. And since all these are USB and they all charge via USB C, um, I've got a few USB C cables in the, the lid here. Um, and so that way I can top up anything if I need to. All this has like, I think the thing with the shortest battery are the mics and they have like four or five hours of battery. And then the, the this has like an hour or two. And then this also has like two to three hours. So combined it's like four to six hours of recording. I don't know. I, I should, I'm not worried about battery, but I have this in case. Um, and then it's got a micro SD. I got a spare micro SD and, and cable. So that that's the whole, that's the whole package right there. That's it. <laughs> uh, lift service is decent and lovely. It should be. Um, let's be honest, Denver is a pretty yuppie place. Um, so you should be okay with all that. And then I got my laptop, which um, it, it's a ThinkPad. It's a T470S. Um, it's got one of those crappy dual core i7s. Um, it's like a 76. 700 T or something like that. Um, it's good enough for everything except for video editing, which is, I, I, I don't really do on the go, um, but I've got that in case. The only thing I don't like about it is because it's a older laptop, it uses a brick. So I can't just use like one of those nice little compact gallium USB-C chargers. I have to, I have to bring the brick, so. 
but it's good enough. Uh, there's a ton of stickers. Yeah, it's it, it's got Linux on it. So anytime you have a laptop with Linux on it, you got to sticker bomb it, right? That That's kind of the go-to, right? You, you sticker bomb stuff with Linux. That That's what you do. Uh, yeah, Uber and Lyft should be pretty good. The thing is, most of the event is within like one little area. So like... Uh, what are my thoughts on PC ABS for forum parts? Uh, you got to print it really hot. Otherwise, you may have cracking issues. But otherwise, you're pretty good. Um, or is the MacBook in your developer? I want to get a MacBook so bad, but I cannot justify it. I, I, I can't justify it. Because here's the thing. I, I travel to an event four or five times a year. That's the only time I use a laptop. The only time I use a laptop is when I'm traveling to an event, which I do four to five times a year. That's it. Um, and when we do the annual family vacation and we're like bored sitting in a hotel room, um, I don't game on laptops. I have a pimped out desktop that I use for that. Um, I, 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 I would like a MacBook. The problem is I, I want to, I can't get a base model MacBook because I edit video and I, I don't know about you. Eight gigs is not enough. Yes, I know. Ooh the Macs are more efficient. Yeah, I don't feel like using my non-fixable, replaceable SSD as a swap file for everything. So, um, so I got, that's why I got this. Somebody sent me this. It, it, it's plenty good. It, I use it for YouTube, watching Twitch, and then uh, to, uh, like whatever in the hotel room. And then, yeah. What all I do is at the end of the day recording, I take the files off of the SD card and I, I transfer them to the laptop and also an external SSD, um, which I bought and I'm waiting for it to show up. That's why I was checking for the mail um, because that allows that you, you don't want your entire, you don't want to be flying back and somebody steal your, your, your camera bag and all of a sudden all your footage is gone too. So you want backups of your footage. Um, so what I do is I put, um, I, 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 I do as much as I can to offload so I have this in my bag, and then I have an SSD with all the footage as well in my uh, carry-on, so my, my suitcase essentially. So that way I have two points of the data from the event. Um, can charge from the USB port? Can it? Is that what that means? Is that what the little lightning bolt? I thought that meant Thunderbolt. I thought that meant Thunderbolt. It's a T470S. It's like, I've got... Yeah, that's just a normal USB. I don't know. Try it. Well, I... You know what the funny thing is? I actually have a 65-watt uh, USB charger coming in today. I'm waiting for it to come in. Because I want it... I want it... Instead of... Because my problem is, every time I go to an event, I have, like, the dongle hell. So I have, like... I have this from England. But I have, like... I bring, like, two or three of these. Because these are the only USB chargers I have is the ones that come with phones. So I have like four or five of these floating around the house. So I just bring a handful of these. So I went and actually bought a plug-in one with like three or four USB outs and it's an anchor one with uh, PD. So it's like 65 Watts. Cause I figured, hey, if I do get a laptop in the future, it'd be nice to have. So if I could charge this with that, I'll be, I'll be happy. So we'll find out. Uh, T is it, well, it's a T470S. I don't know if that makes a difference, but it's a T470S. You can try if you can, that'd be great, because then I don't have to bring this stupid thing. That makes it even lighter. So that goes in there. That goes in there. That's it. I'm done. I'm packed. <laughs> oh, I got my 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 trusty uh, $10 Logitech wireless mouse. Now, I could spend more and get a Bluetooth mouse, so I wouldn't need to put the dongle in the laptop, but I'm lazy. And this is good enough. <laughs> uh, anchor, tisk, tisk. Ah, eh, they make good shit. Traveling, yeah, US USB-C is great. You know, I'm gonna go check to see if I got a package again. Let's see, do I have a package? Hey, puffer, you got my buddy. Package? 
package, no package. What's really annoying is, you know how when you check Amazon for shipping status and like the, the, the graph is moving and it's like out for delivery and you check in the morning and it's like way at the bottom. And then like, as it goes throughout the day, it keeps getting closer and then it gets really close and you're like, it's almost here. And it's like 11 in the afternoon and then it doesn't show up till eight o'clock at night. Uh, Doggo's being mopey by the door. So yes, so Rocky Mountain. So what's going on at Rocky Mountain? So I am not participating in any events like the Death Racers or anything. I hate flying with stuff. I, I'm a very, if anyone's ever traveled with me, um, I'm very anal about timings and like, let's go, let's go, let's go. So I hate bringing extra stuff. I hate being responsible for bringing extra stuff. So I always pack really light and I hate bringing stuff. So I'm not gonna bring like a death racer on a plane. So I'm not participating in that. I'm gonna try and bring a death racer to Rocky Mountain. We'll see. I gotta rebuild mine. Um, we'll see. Um, but these are the events. So here's the layout. So last year, um, it was only half of this. So last year we only had, can I, where's, how do I zoom in? Oh, it's PDF, that's why. Freaking WebM, I hate WebM. Go away, WebM. Ship, I hate it, I hate WebM. Crap format, why can't I zoom in? Why can't I zoom in? Why can't I zoom in? I, I, I can, I can, you know. Zoom, yeah, whatever. Anyways, um, this is where the cool kids are. Last year, we only had this one building, the North Hall. That's where everyone was last year. Control plus. I don't have plus on this keyboard. Normally you just hit like control or shift and you scroll in and out, right? But it's not working. Yeah, I don't have, uh, yeah, I don't have plus on this keyboard. <laughs> uh, anyway, whatever. Um, yeah, so last year we were only in the North Hall this year they have the North and the South Hall. So it's twice as much room as uh, previous years. So that's that's cool. No, no, no. Is it shift? What is going on with my keyboard? Is my keyboard working? Yeah, okay. What is going on here? No, is it alt? There we go, it's alt. There we go. Move me into the corner. There we go. Okay. So last year, <laughs> uh, free of minutes, I believe so. Event details, uh, get your free tickets. There you go. Free tickets. There you go. Scan that. Pull out your phone. So it's at the ranch in Loveland. Um, event details. So it's, it's only on the weekend. So unlike some of the Rep Rep Fest, the Friday's not open. Friday's a setup day only. So it's only open uh, the 20th and the 21st. So the funny number day, and then the day after the funny number day. Um, talk about timing. So we're going to Colorado. Um, and yeah, so it's twice as much room as last year. So this this is the fun corner. So they, they redid the layout. So the aisles are much wider um, on the outside which helped because in this corner, we have Voron Design, Fabrico, West 3D, KB3D, E3D and Duet, um, Deep Fried Hero, Coco Press, Hugh Forge and Prusa and LDO. This is the cool kids corner. <laughs> Everyone's cool, but this is the cool kids corner. Uh, so this is gonna be the busy area. Uh, and then up here, we got TH3D, Cookie CAD, Vision Miner, they make good stuff, iWorks, Sedaver, I don't know who those are. Uh, Microswift, Oozebot, Sapphire, Protopasta, Lulzbot, B1. Lulzbot's always interesting. I, we'll see. Um, Rack Robotics. And then last year, this was all closed off. So this year we got this whole other area. Big Tree Tech, Polymaker, uh, 3D printed Lamborghini is gonna be there. Um, 3D Gloop, Lightburn, West 3D, uh, who's that? Icy 3D, Luke's Lab, Wham Bam. Uh, I don't know what the colors mean. I wish, uh, like, I don't know what, like, the different colors mean. Like, are they different tiers of sponsor? I don't know. Um, but yeah, 
So that's that. And they got Jeff. Jeff's here. Uh, the Maker Lounge. Um, that's where the cool kids hang out. Uh, Edge of Tech. Yeah. So it's going to be cool. It is going to be cool. Um, there's going to be a lot of people. Um, it, it, it's it's going to be... I've got a feeling Rocky Mountain... Like, it, this is really early to say, considering this is the second year. I really think Rocky Mountain is going forward going to be like the the premier rep rep fest. I know they, they all have their own thing and they're all good in their own way. I just got a feeling Rocky Mountain is like the big one now. Um, Cause it used to be Murph, but I, I think as Murph is kind of, I'm, I'm trying not to use like words that are like, Meh, but like as Murph is kind of like stagnated, I think Rocky Mountain has kind of like taken over as like the one where people are, companies are going to show off cool shit. They're all going into all these ones. Uh, but I think Rocky Mountain's where you're probably going to see the the cool stuff, because um, it, it's just it's a it's a it's a really good location. It, it traveling is the big thing. Rocky Mountain is next to Denver, Colorado, which is a hub for a lot of airlines. You you can fly the Sketch Express Spirit on a on a Boeing Max for like peanuts to get there. Um, I like living, so I fly Delta on Airbuses, but you know. is what it is you can get there cheap so that's that's really nice um so if you're going to travel to one of them probably rocky mountain's your best bet uh how much the event costs it is free to enter but you do need to get a ticket just so they know for numbers um can you bring your printer uh nope not anymore you had to sign up how do you get there you drive what equipment should i bring uh power and surge and memories it has memories Murph is more community focused and such doesn't have the same commercial launched up on the flip side, hence also in the maker party. Murph is really good to go chill with people. That That's what I like Murph. Murph is you just go to hang out and shoot the shit with folks. Um, you know, 11 o'clock at night on the Saturday drunk, helping Coco Press, you know, bootstrap of Revo to a Coco Press. That That's the kind of shit you go to Murph for. Um, Although I think Rocky Mountain's a good in-between. Because when I, okay, as somebody who is a content creator in the 3D printing sphere, um, who got started going to events kind of late, because when I started doing YouTube, we had COVID. So we had a lockdown. So 2020 and 2021, basically I couldn't go to any events. I was gonna go to Murph 2020, but then, you know, everyone started coughing and whatever. So I was always told you go to Murph for the party, you go to, uh, Earth for the business. That's how it was. It was was Murph was the the party rep rep fest, and Earth was the business rep rep fest. But now we have Rocky Mountain, which is kind of both. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, yeah, Murph is the hangout event. Yeah. Also, Murph it helps that it's like a three hour drive for me because it's just over the border in Indiana. So I get up early, I cross the border before traffic, and I get there by like ten. So it's not too bad. Uh, what else? So we got the, here's the schedule. Um, so Saturday, 8 a.m. Space, yeah, you know, doors open to the public at nine, uh, concession, drag races. So that's the events that there's actually like a schedule though. Um, we have an actual proper after party this year. So if you are going and if you are a sponsor or you're working with one of the companies or you're like a content creator that's like on the list, I guess, I don't know. There's an after party, please, if, if, if Please don't try to sneak in. It's really weird and awkward. It just is. Um, so yeah, so that's that's that. Um, sponsors, so Sunday, same thing. Death Racers, Drag Races are at 11. I think Death Racers are both days. Yep. Uh, Maker Lounge, uh, that is for, that's basically the green room for content creators and uh, exhibitors, I believe. Um, and then this is the actual event. Uh, or no, the Maker Lounge isn't the green room. They do have a green room though. Um, so these are like speeches or presentations people are putting on. Uh, so at 10 a.m. Saturday, past and future of 3D uh, printing with Big Tree Tech. I like Big Tree Tech. They, they, any company that actually listens to the community and puts out stuff based on feedback, I like. Um, 2024 3D printed toys for tots campaign by 3D IC3D. Uh, Maker That Money Live with Pooch. 
uh, 1 to 145. Public Q&A with Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd. Uh, what's the industrial 3D printing with Clayton McNamara of SME and David of 3D Printing Nerd? That'll be interesting to watch. That's one thing I never go, I go to these events, I never end up watching the speeches because I'm always like bouncing around talking to people. And it's like, just to sit down and listen to somebody talk for 45 minutes, like I can talk to that person, that person, that person, and record that video. It's, it's a few of these, so I do want to try and get in on. Um, 3 to 345, Voron panel with members of the Voron design team. I'm not on that. I'm, I'm not involved with that. Just so you know. Um, resin safety with Akuda mods. Yes, pay attention to that one. <laughs> uh, Sunday applications of color in Hue Forge presented by Steve. That'll be cool. Uh, deposition sound sculpting audio excellence one layer at a time. I think they do 3D printed speakers. Um, and then 12 to 1245, uh, 3D printing panel with Joel, Ellie, Akuma Maz, Pez Liz, Grant, moderated by Edge of Tech. That'll be cool. Uh, who says you can't play with your food with Matt? Matt's part of Cocoa Press now, for those that don't know. Um, and then 3D printing cosplay with A to Z Industries. There you go. So there's gonna be a ton of events and also there's gonna be just talk to people. If you are involved in 3D printing or anything that's a adjacent to this hobby, just go to the event and just shoot the shit with people. Seriously, just go to go to the event. What am, what am I bringing? And a camera. Um, the problem is with a lot of these events, if you bring something, you have a booth and now you have to sit at the booth. And I, I, I can't, I can't do that. I mean, technically I can't, I, I'm, I camp out at the Voron booth when I go to these events. So technically I, I'm with Voron, but I'm also doing my own thing. So it, it's weird. I, 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 I th Voron booths where I had my shit. <laughs> um, yeah. So if I'm, yeah but I'm not actually bringing anything to present. I'm gonna try, also I'm flying. That's the problem, I'm flying and I fly light, like carry on only and I don't like check baggage or anything. So I don't have any, I, I can't really bring anything. Um, I am gonna try and bring, if I can get it done before, the Helldivers cosplay to Rocky Mountain and 3D Printopia, we'll see, we'll see. Um, so that's that. Death Racers and Drag Racers are doing events if you are interested in that. So Real Sam Prentice is gonna be there with the Death Racer stuff and Edge of 3D with the, the Dragsters. So that'll be cool if you're doing that. I'll try and record it this year. Last year, I completely forgot about it. <laughs> um, attractions. Um, so this is gonna be there. Uh, 3D printed Lamborghini is gonna be there. Uh, 3D print Bunny is also gonna have a bunch of stuff. She does some really cool uh, design work. Uh, Jeff is gonna be there, Joel, Edge Tech, that, Polar Filament, Resin 3D, oh, that's Akuma, um, and the Filament Exchange. So if you have like random spare filament you wanna trade, bring it in, I guess. When's a 3D printing boxing match? I, I don't know. We're all friends, that's a thing. <laughs> um, well, except for the people that are banned from these events. Um, Giveaways, so there's a bunch of giveaways. LDO's giving away stuff. LDO always gives away stuff. Uh, we got a Saval uh, stuff. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'll be cool. And LDO already has stuff. So yeah, there's giveaways to, to give away. Uh, travel and accommodations. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. And get your tickets now. So it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be exciting. It, it feels weird because it's been like five months since I've been at an event and it's like, the drought is over finally. The drought is finally over. Can you tell 3D Gloop to actually get some stock sent to the UK? Okay. If I remember, remind me. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. When is, or we already read that. Oh wait, do I have live chat still? Oh no, let me turn on live chat so I can actually see. So it looks like 12% of people are going to Rocky Mountain. That kind of makes sense. There's usually a couple thousand. I think last year they had like 2000 people go. So. Um, Maker Fair Hanover. There's a few Maker Fairs um, and some other stuff like globally, um, but yeah. Uh, do I give autographs? I do, I guess. I don't know, I just put Nero 3D. I don't have a Canuck creator. Also, I m should have stickers. Um, I wasn't able, I got my, my new logo. I wasn't able to get the stickers I wanted in time. Um, 
from a place that I can get them from really cheap because just shipping uh, wouldn't have gotten them here in time. But somebody who does do stickers was able to get a bunch made up and hopefully they're in time. So I should have stickers to give out. Uh, we'll see. You had an order in Gloop for processing for eight days. Okay. I, I mean, Gloop is a small team. Like Gloop isn't like, it, it, you're not buying something off Amazon when you buy something from Gloop. They're, they try to get it out as quick as they can. It just, it is what it is. Um, also, they're probably getting ready for Rocky Mountain as well. So who knows? Who knows? I, I can't really comment on if eight days is normal. Oh. Um, stickers are great. Honestly, if you go to these events, don't bring maker coins. This is going to sound weird, but maker coins are kind of a waste. I know that's a thing in 3D printing. Everyone designs their own maker coin. I know Maker's Muse has a video on it that I think everyone has seen at least once. Um, but uh, the thing with maker coins is what do you do with them? I, every time I go to these events, I get like a half dozen to a dozen maker coins given to me. And I'm like, okay, now I got to put them in my bag. And, and, and now I got to keep track of them. And it's like, what, what do I, do? most of them end up in the garbage, no offense. Stickers, I put on the wall. If you give me stickers, I'm going to put on, I'm going to put something on the wall so I can sticker bomb the whole wall. Um, but yeah, so stickers are good. Stickers are good. Um, i like to see, yes, there's a V-Core 4. I don't know if I could say, but there's going to be a V-Core 4 at the Fabrico booth. I don't know if that's public, but I guess it is now. Um, so I'm going to try and do a video on that, hopefully. <laughs> everyone with the make... The problem is, though, it, it's not so much the capability. Yes, everyone with a 3D printer can make a maker coin. Everyone with a job can convert money into a product, too. Like, I can, I can use my money to buy filament that I used on the 3D printer I bought to make a maker coin, or I could just use the money I got to just buy stickers. The thing with stickers is they're a lot easier to do something with. With maker coins, what do I do with maker coins? Somebody's like, oh, I put them in a jar, cool. I, I, you walk around, I've got like four maker coins in one thing, I've got stickers in another, I've got my camera, I got my backed up battery, and it's like, okay, at the end of the day, I go to the hotel, it's like, throw all the maker coins in a random bag, oh, I forgot about them. Like, it, it's, and what do you do with them? What do you do with them? Like, it's like, okay, this is a piece of plastic. Um, it's supposed to be a rat rig mill. The rat rig mill is a portal style mill. It's like, it's a gantry, right? It's, 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 it's a, it's like a router type mill. Whereas the Milo, the Milo is probably more capable on smaller things, but you're limited on the Milo by its volume. Okay, so the Milo is a beefier design with a smaller volume versus um, gantry style CNC's like Print NC, um, the Rat Rig CNC. Those have more room, but they're more designed for routing. Um, so yeah. Maker coins should have been maker fidget toys, then it'd be useful. I mean, if 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 you like fidget toys, and there, then the price goes up because now you need components of them like bearings and whatnot. Uh, maker coins should have been or uh, challenge coins. I've got challenge coins. I've got army challenge coins. Again, they just kind of sit in a drawer. Uh, print NC, it's good fun. I was looking into getting a print NC for a bit until I realized I ain't got the room for that. At least with the Milo, like yes, I got to put an enclosure on it, so it's you need a meter wide because of the swing of the bed. But like the machine itself is relatively small compared to like a, you know, a print NC, which is like this wide by this deep. So it's going to take up that much room all the time. Yeah, you could do like mods where you can like hang it on a wall or something, but it's still a big thing you have to store. Versus that, which is not as big, it's dense. It's got weight to it, but it's not as big. So when the monthly contest coming back, um, I'm letting them chill for a bit because they kind of were doing this. Um, Cause there's only so much you can do, but we'll see. I'm going to try and do something after Rocky Mountain. Cause I also want to get more sponsors involved for the giveaways for them. Um, because previously how it worked is you basically, the, the two winners got um, either a hat or a shirt off the only Benchy store, which I paid for out of pocket. And then a spool of filament from Polymaker. So I'm trying to get more prizes for the prize pool for that just to make it more interesting. Because I, I, I want to start doing challenges that people actually have to invest in. Um, but I don't want people investing for like literally nothing. 
Like, okay, spool of filament and a hat, cool. But somebody's not gonna go and, you know, spend hundreds of hours working on something cool and a bunch of filament for a hat. So that's why a lot of the challenges, but the thing is I like doing challenges where anyone can enter and anyone has a chance to win. So if I do my challenges, you notice I, I kind of try and, I try and word them in a way that basically anyone technically has a fair chance at winning. Cause I hate modeling contests. Like, oh, hey, design this cool thing. The vast majority of people are shit at CAD and don't know how to do it. Me included. I'm very not good at CAD. Um, so having to, you know, immediately cut out a good chunk of my audience, because most people can't do CAD, that's why I don't like doing contests where like, it, it, you have to have like a high level of skill in something to have a good chance at winning, so. Weren't Make Your Coins originally tell us? It was, it was kind of like a bit of both. It was like a, a project that you, you learn, you learn CAD for a basic project and then filament swatch. It was kind of like it did a bunch of things. Uh, holiday challenge, that's what I did. Um, the last challenge we did was, um, I'm pretty sure it was like, like your holiday prints, holiday slash winter prints. Um, hence why, yeah, so Fabrico wants to put in gift cards. Um, so that'll add to the prize pool. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. I want to try and get like an actual structure set up to make it like an actual thing instead of just like random stuff every month. I'm like, I, I kind of want to do like a, like an ongoing thing. So. Been learning Fusion. Fusion isn't too bad because I, I find the whole sketch and extrude thing a lot easier. That's why I don't like Tinkercad. I don't like Tinkercad because Tinkercad is you're just mashing shapes together. I, I like be having like an actual sketch with known geometry and everything's nice and laid out and then you extrude it and you manipulate it that way. I like atta attacking 3D modeling that way versus square, square, mash, cube, mash, shrink, sh sh slice. Like I, I, I don't like, I don't like the Lego aspect of Tinkercad. So, but I started with Fusion, that's my thing. I started CAD, technically I started CAD with AutoCAD back in college, back in like 2005, but that was for civil engineering. So we were doing like house modeling in it, like floor plans and whatnot. Do you think there'll be a Voron that uses linear motors? Nope, simple as that. Linear motors are not commercial off the shelf. I mean, okay, technically yes, you can buy linear motors that are commercial off the shelf. The problem is, they do not go into a 3D printer. You have to basically get custom uh, linear motor setups for your specific application, which immediately negates it being a Voron. Simple as that. That might, I might do that video. Tomorrow's, if I do a video tomorrow, it's gonna be a rant video because if you bought it in a box, it's not a Voron. And I, I'm sick and tired. Like I'm not sick and tired of it, but I'm really not a fan of the way certain people are phrasing Oh, if you can't buy a Vor, if you can't build a Voron, you can just buy a Voron. And I really don't like that because that's not how, that's not what a Voron is. It's, it's nothing against the printer itself that people are referring that to, because there's a few of them. Uh, the form bots, the SVO8s and whatnot. But you, you're not, if you can't build a Voron, you can't just buy a Voron. If you can't build a Voron, uh, this is gonna sound bad, but okay, that sucks. No Voron for you. <laughs> I, I it, it sounds really weird. You could. Now, if you want a flying gantry Core XY machine, go ahead, buy one. But that's not a Voron, okay? The whole, like, I see it, I've seen it in a ton of comments on some videos where it's like, it, no, you, you're being too harsh on it. If people can't afford a Voron, this is a good alternative. And it's like, no, you're wording it wrong. If people can't afford a flying gantry Core XY that's DIY, this is a good alternative if somebody wants a flying gantry Core XY machine that they want to buy out of a box and not build but it's not a Voron, don't call it a Voron. <laughs> um, buying a Voron that someone else built? Yes, because the printer itself is a Voron. Uh, can't build a Voron, buy a bamboo. Honestly, yes. The P1S is still my go-to recommended printer for people, for a reason. Voron mods compatible with printer, um, like the SV08. Um, as far as I'm aware, not, on, not a single Voron mod is compatible with the SV08 because none of the ge geometry is the same. The only thing that you might be able to do is you might be able to take the tool head off and the bracket the belts mount to and mount a stealth burner. 
Um, but I can't guarantee that because I don't have the CAD. Um, th they gave it to TNL, but okay. But you know, it's not on their website. So the CAD's out there, but somebody would have to take the CAD and also import the V2 CAD and see if the belt alignment's the same. Because if the belt alignment isn't the same, which I don't know if it is because their bearing stacks are different. They don't have spacers in their bearings and they use off the shelf bearings. Uh, they use different bearings than a spec Voron. So I don't know if their belt alignment's the same. So if the belts on like the SV08 are like this and the belts on a Voron are like this, the, the, they're, not gonna, they're not gonna attach right, okay, in the, in the tool head. But technically I think you can swap out the tool head on that, like the whole entire tool head. You could theoretically put a, a stealth burner tool head on it. The problem is, you're still gonna have to mod the stealth burner because the electronics aren't compatible. The, 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 the tool head board on that thing, on the SV08, it's, it's, I have it out of frame right now, um, is a dual tool head, it's a dual board design. So it's one PCB and then another PCB and they're not compatible with any of the existing mounts. So you're gonna still have to mod the tool head to use, or you can use like another tool head board and then connect that to the controller and then reprogram it like to redo the config to use like a, 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 a Nighthawk or something like that, because it's Clipper, you can do that. That's the one good thing about it. Um, as for like AB motor mounts, idlers, the gantry, yeah, none of that's compatible out of the box. You're gonna have to mod it because the dimensions on, on everything are completely different. Belt pathing is completely different. The way the gantry attaches to the Z uh, carriages is completely different. Uh, the frame is completely different. So I, I don't know why people are like, like any, any you're, you're not, yeah, you could take a Voron mod and mod it to that, but you may end up just designing a mod from scratch. So. The EU, EU friendly time. That's why I do it. Well, also because this is like the only time I can because the little guy's in school. Because <laughs> when, when he's done school, then I gotta go pick him up. The real Voron is the friend we made along the way. It is, it is. I wanna see if my package is here yet. I'm logging into my Amazon. Can I log into my Amazon on this computer? Should be saved. Oh, what's my one time? What is it, what is it, what is it? Uh, Where's my package? Is my package here? Did I? Did I or, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh no, I screwed up. I screwed up, oh no. I screwed up. Oh no. I goofed. Shit. Yeah, I goofed. Dang it. No, I ordered it, but I ordered it on the wrong Amazon account. Because, okay, so I've got a personal business account or a personal Amazon account, and then I have the business Amazon account that I use for like buying stuff for the channel. So I bought stuff, you know, for this weekend, and I just I just loaded up Amazon and bought, like it was like a charger and an external hard drive. So, or SSD. So I just loaded up Amazon, I bought it, and it, it's like, okay, cool. So I, I, I paid for it, but the problem is I was logged into my personal Amazon account, not the business Amazon account, because I have to be logged into the personal Amazon account on Amazon Prime, so I can watch shows on Amazon Prime, because you can't do Amazon Prime on a business account, you have to do it on a personal account. So the problem is the login like instance is the same. So if you go in, if I go to amazonprime.com and log in with my personal account, it automatically switches amazon.ca to my personal account instead of my business account. Shit. And I didn't know that. Damn you, Fallout. There's gonna be some Fallout here. Fallout New Vegas. Um, dang it, I hate when that happens. That's just like, it. at the end of the day, like it's still my money. I'm, I'm, I'm paying, you know, if I, the money comes out of this pile or that pile, it just, it's, the business aspect of it. Shit, I hate when I do that. Uh, Dan Deagle, Daigle, uh, just passed my qualifying exam yesterday. One more step 
to my PhD in health informatics. Nice. Everyone, congrats. Everyone, golf claps in chat. Just need. To, I don't really do that because I, the way I keep track of stuff, it's just I, I have a pile of receipts, <laughs> and the government doesn't complain when I do my taxes that way, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. <laughs> it's like uh, this this kind of works. Oh no, this broke too. I gotta fix this. Armor status, sanding. I, I I've done uh the first big pass of a prime sand fill prime. Um, I gotta do, I gotta go through and do a hand sand on everything to get all like the little nooks and cranny area. And then we'll be uh, probably one more coat of priming and sanding. And I'll probably a one more little pass of Bondo for some really rough areas. And then we'll be ready for um, painting. So. You're kind of going stealth press. We'll have a display in KB3, best I can do. That's good enough. Good old gloop. Have you seen the prop maker reels? I have not. The problem is I don't want to watch that because I've got a full 3D printed set of T45 power armor in a box right in front of me. Um, and I've purposely put that project on hiatus because I realized I bit off more than I could chew. Um, Cause I have to do a crap ton of sanding to get everything good and priming and painting and getting ready for paint. And then I have to build the suit. And because it's a power armor suit, it's going to make me like six and a half feet tall. So there's a whole bunch of other stuff I got to do to make the suit work. And I'm like, I'm going to have to wait till I have, I'm, I want to finish the Helldiver armor first as like practice essentially for a bunch of the stuff I want to do. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh... Did I do a, a video? I did not because it. there's so many, I, I don't really like doing videos on things that people have already done videos on, especially something that I'm not an expert in or like, especially something I'm getting new into. So like I've only ever done one full cosplay and that was the, uh, the, the Mando armor. So I'm working on my second thing. I, I'm not an authority in it at all. So I'm not gonna go do a tutorial video on something that somebody who's been doing it for decades has done a video on. There's already enough videos out there on how to properly size cosplay. So just go watch one of those. It's like, it's like why I don't do tutorials on Enders. People have asked me, how come we don't have tutorial videos on like, you know, other, like the basic 3D printing stuff? Cause I don't want to. His name's Chep. Go watch his shit. He's good at it. He has everything you would want to know about Enders. So. Uh, in a suit that makes me taller. I have the, let me find the boot. Where is the boot? Where did I put the boot? There's the boot. Okay, so this is like, it, it, this isn't like the final position, but this is like the mock-up of the boot for the power armor um, with the insert in it, I think. Is the insert in there? Yeah. So, so just to put it in perspective, let me put my boot on. Okay. So this is me standing straight up in normal shoes. And this is me in the power armor boots. I'm, I'm basically on high heels. I'm, I'm up about four inches above my normal height. And then the helmet itself will add another three inches. So I'm five foot nine. So five foot nine plus four plus three. But I got to figure out how to do this where it's not, you know, a piece of plywood because that's going to get heavy quick. The armor is already heavy. I know it's going to be heavy. I'm probably going to reprint a bunch of stuff to print it lighter because I printed pretty much the whole armor in Voron spec settings. Because I'd rather print it and it be strong and not break. Um, but something like the helmet, like, where's the helmet? It's over here. The helmet weighs two kilograms as is and it doesn't have anything on it. This weighs two kilograms already. So yeah, you know, yeah, it's really cool. Okay. It, it, it's gonna sit like right about here. It's gonna sit up higher. It's sitting too low. Um, 
So yeah, yeah, you know, it looks really cool, but I don't have the ears on it. I don't have the eye thing. I don't have the hoses on it. Um, I kind of screwed up because I, I printed this without knowing how it was going to go together. So like this right here, this can be hollow. I get the circle part could go right through and I'm going to re when I reprint it, I'm going to do that because I want to hollow it out so I can put a fan in here, have intakes where these slots are and just have two fans, like just two blower fans or just radial fan, like regular normal, like 30, 30 fans blowing air that sucks in here through the hoses in through the front. So that way it'll keep me cool. Right? So there, there's, there's a, I need to reprint this. I need to reprint this and I might scale it down slightly. Look, it's huge, but it's, I don't want to scale it down because it's power armor. That's the thing. If you start scaling power armor, it'll look weird because the proportions will be out. I think power armor is one of those things where you have to make it fit you, not, or you have to make yourself fit it instead of it make fit you. Like the Helldiver's armor, I've scaled it. So like the helmet on my Helldiver's armor is scaled correctly. Okay. So this is 94% scale. Um, which means my beard sticks out, but it's actually scaled correctly for a head of my size. Um, so this is scaled correctly, but the problem is my beard sticks out. So I got to wear a neck gaiter to hide my neck. Um, but this is exactly how it should be scaled because your, your jaw line should just be just like the line of the helmet should be right at the jaw line, basically. Um, yeah. Where are we diving? Yeah. But compare that to, where is, oh, it's over here. Yeah, this is the, uh, the Mando helmet. So this was the same thing. This is, um, this was scaled like 98%, but literally when I wear this, um, my nose is touching. Like if you touch this, you're touching my nose. In the back of my head, it's touching. Like there's, there's like barely any room to shift this front to back. It's as big as, it's literally as small as it can be and still fit my head. So. Steve Alpha, $10, cheers and appreciate it for the Rocky Mountain Travel Fund. Cheers. Bro, well, hell, it's the same, yeah. I'm a big fan of you. Sh people print um, cosplay too big. Majority of people print cosplay too big. Simple as that, especially helmets, because nobody likes being claustrophobic in a tight helmet. The problem is it's designed that way. That's why if you look at like, go look at pictures of people in their Boba Fett helmets, everyone's a bobblehead. So many people are bobbleheads. Also, people don't pad their armor out. If, you're, if you have a shoulder pad on, okay, it shouldn't be like this. Okay, it shouldn't be like this. Okay, it should be like this. It's, it's, it's shoulder armor, it's padded. It should be like an inch off the body. Like there should be bulk to it. But the problem is a lot of people make their, man, their Mando armor off of that really thin plastic that you can cut in shape. Um, and it, it, you just look like you're wearing cardboard and it's really flat, really flat. Where is it? No, oh, oh, videos. I'm trying to find the Eclipse stuff because I, I remember I never showed you guys the Eclipse stuff that I recorded. Um, ba, 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 ba. Uh, your 3D import 2024 Eclipse. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. View large icon. Talk about 3D printing, $5. Cheers and appreciate it. Can't wait to go again. So excited to see more people. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Um, by day modify. There we go. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we went to the eclipse last week, last Monday. Um, and I've got video and some pictures. And I was dumb and I recorded, I saved. Yeah. This was like just after 
it cleared up, like after the sun went by. So this is like 99.9%. Little guy, there's the fam. So yeah, so this is where we saw the eclipse from. So this is in uh, Leamington Seacliff Beach, for those that know the area. Eat the Canada flag. So we had these high level clouds roll in like an hour before the eclipse, but it actually worked out really good and I'll show you why in a second. Um, uh, try goth platform boots. That could work too. Some guy was flying his drone. I'm like, why were you flying a drone? It, it the sun is billion, millions of miles away. Flying your little DJI drone up 30 feet isn't gonna give you a better view, unless you want to look down. Oh, here, you can kind of see it here. You can kind of see it here on, let's see, let's see. Uh, is it a sun dog? Yeah. Ah, shoot, uh, go back a second. Yeah. See, you could see the eclipse right there. So you could see how much it, the sun is so bloody bright. Even at like 99.99% .99 totality, it's just the sun. You, you wouldn't know. If you did not know there was an eclipse going on, you would not know. You would just think it's slightly cloudy. Um, but you can see the little sun dog there, the crescent uh, sun there um, in the reflection off like the, the polarization on the camera. So that was cool. Um, this is again like, I think this is just, just a crowd shot, yeah. So this is, yeah, this is it coming. So this is like, you can see the shadow coming. And we had, <laughs> It was funny because you could see, oh, there's uh, Venus. Oh, uh, so this is under totality. So I locked off the ISO on my camera so that it wouldn't like auto compensate so you could actually see it. Also, a lot of this I'm recording, I'm just like aiming it. I'm not actually looking through the, I'm looking at the moon for a lot of, or the, the sun for a lot of this. Uh, Farnaby, 27 euro, cheers and appreciate it. Hope to get to visit Forum Next in Germany sometime. I would love to, the problem is logistically and financially, it's a big ask going to one of those. Uh, and this is just on my shitty Pixel 6. So you could see the clouds. So that because we had those high level clouds, um, you could actually see the shadow of the moon cast on the clouds. And because we were on a lake, you could actually see it like coming and going from far away. So you can actually see like the sun coming back. Yeah, so you could see like goodbye eclipse. Like the moment the sun peeks out, boom, Corona's gone. It just blows it right out. It's actually insane how bright it is. Wait for it. You can see it's like, oh, it's just starting to get bright. And then there's the uh, the diamond ring and then boom, it's back. <laughs> and I think I played with the ISO at that point. Yeah, so this is like the initial of it. And then I dropped down the ISO and it's like, boom, dark. Uh, this is everyone leaving. It was crazy busy. More people leaving. And this is like 99% totality right here too. Like you, you wouldn't know that the, like, you wouldn't know that like the majority of the sun was hidden in this scene. You'd be like, ah, oh, just slightly cloudy. No, the sun's like mostly gone. Um, here's the time-lapse. So this was, this was a time-lapse I recorded. So you can really see the, um, the shadow with this. Uh, totality in your backyard, nice. So this, yeah, you can see you can see the uh, shadow coming. And totality. Yeah, let me let me hide the overlay. And then you can see the sun come back. So it's really cool because you can see the 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 shadow come. It just goes whoop.
And then because we were on the edge of totality, the, the sun comes back from a different direction. And then whoop. And then I think I have a longer one. Yeah, this is the full time lapse. So this is funny because I started this about 15, 20 minutes before the eclipse actually like before totality. So the sun is gradually disappearing. I locked the ISO, I locked the white balance and it's barely getting darker. It's weird. It, it, it's really cool like how little everything changes until like, boom, the sun's gone. So that's why whenever somebody tells you like, oh, there's an eclipse coming, but you know, we're at 98% totality or like 99%. No, that's not good. Get to, if you can get to 100% totality, go. Because it's a difference between like this and holy shit, the sky broke. It, it, it's funny, right here? Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, there it goes. And there I go. And then I come back carrying him. <laughs> the little guy took off. I'm like, Jet, you're, you're breaking the time lapse. Jet. It was really cool. We saw a bunch of planes chasing the eclipse, too. You should sell that time. Drew, everyone, there are so many videos of this eclipse out. I'm not going to get any money selling this video. It's a time lapse of the eclipse. There, there's, there's dozens and hundreds and thousands of videos of this on YouTube. This time lapse isn't anything special. It's just a GoPro aimed at the sky on time lapse mode. Boom. So yeah. So this is this is you know, you, you you if I had traveled, if I didn't do the forty five minute drive. This is what you see, which is nothing. It's like if you didn't, if I didn't drive 45 minutes, this is what the eclipse, this is what the eclipse looked like for my house. This is nothing. This is, hey, it's slightly cloudy out. It's like, hey, I'm not going to drive 45 minutes. Oh, wow, that eclipse is cool. Versus me who drove 45 minutes going, wow, that's cool. Holy shit, the sky broke. Who broke the sky? <laughs> oh yeah it looks way crazier in person like the seeing the corona and everything for and we actually saw i thought it was just like because when you look at it the moon's not a perfect circle so when it covers the sun it's you can see like if there's craters or valleys or whatever like on the edge you could sometimes get like a little speck of light through it uh, but there were actually some solar prominences, I think there were, that you could see. And you could see you could see one of them with the naked eye. So if you looked at the very bottom of the corona, let me see here. Let me find a picture. Uh, uh, ba -ba -ba, images. I'm trying to find actual pictures of it and not like shitty. Yeah, this one, this will work. So you could see this one, this bottom one here, you could see with your naked eye. It was actually really cool. Yeah, it only had, yeah. So I was right across, uh, Commander Kane, I was on the other side of Lake Erie. I was I was in Leamington. Uh, notice all the chemtrails? I know the government chemtrails were all exposed. <laughs> but yeah, you could, you could see the bottom one here during it. It was actually really cool. The sun is in a perfect circle. Well, that's true. Like the sun is oblong. So is the moon. Like the only reason eclipse work, we're, this is the only planet that eclipse happens on. Like total eclipses are a thing. It doesn't happen anywhere else as far as we're aware. Because the only reason an eclipse works is the moon happens to be 400 times smaller than the sun. And the sun happens to be 400 times farther away from the Earth than the moon. It just happens to work out that during this one time and place, it works. And because the moon is gradually moving away from the Earth, um, eventually there won't be total eclipses anymore. Because like we get annular eclipses. Annular eclipses happen more often because sometimes 
you know, because the Earth moves closer and further away from the sun during its orbit, and the moon's orbit brings it closer and further away from the Earth, and sometimes the, 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 the sizes don't match up. So the moon will be much smaller than the sun when it moves in front, and you don't get a total eclipse. You get an annular eclipse, or it doesn't line up perfectly in the, like, side swipe. Um, but in the future, in, you know, what is it, a couple hundred million years, we won't have a total eclipses at all. They just won't be able to happen anymore. And if you go back a bunch of time, they didn't happen either because the sun would just, or the moon would just completely cover the sun because it was closer to the earth. So it just, it's just one of those cosmic coincidences that just happened to work out right now that we can go, hey, cool, an eclipse. Because, you know, there's eclipses on Mars. We've taken pictures of them with the rovers we got there. The problem is the moons on Mars are so dinky and small, they just, they just go, whoop. Uh, are the same size and local. They're not millions of miles away. What? Wait. Beads, are you doing some flat earth shit right now? The sun and the moon are the same size and local, not millions of miles away. Okay. It, it, if you're being serious, get help. Uh, if you're making a joke, okay, haha. -ha. But if you're being serious, like, come on, bro. Like, really? Really? You, you, you need to deprogram yourself from, from TikToks. Like, everyone knows the moon's made of cheese, as, as P.F. Dennis says. The moon is made of cheese. It's that nice Gouda. Ba, 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 ba. The moon may be hollow. Nah. It's, a, it's an inert, it's an inert rock. Very little geologic activity. There's still heat in the middle, but not enough to do anything exciting. I know, that's why cheese is so expensive. It's the shipping. <laughs> we also saw the documentary guy and his dog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did I make my blasters with ABS? Uh, most of them are, are ABS. Um, I think... The orange on this one is um, um, T, uh, PETG, because it's the only orange I had. Uh, but most of them are ABS. Like this one's ABS. This one's ABS, mostly. Um, yeah, they're, they're mostly all ABS. I just love the fact that I can do the, uh, the Arnold thing with this one. One second. Magazine out. Where's the you know what? I want to get a shorter magazine. I could do the Arnold thing with this one. Where where is I need a dart? Ugh. These are Nerf guns. Sorry, blasters. They're Nerf blasters. 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 Use the right. Use the words. I don't want to get caught by the stupid filter. These are Nerf blasters. They shoot Nerf darts. Boom. <laughs> um. Where did I put all the magazines for them? I think they're over here. There are magazines over here. Nope. I had the magazines. Where did I put the magazines? Where did I put all the magazines? I'll use this one. Uh, oh, the stream's going well. Don't worry, it's a Nerf blaster. So this one, I, you can actually do the uh, thing with. The thing is you have to you have to get one in the chamber already, but you can do the, yeah, dang it. Screwed it up. There we go. Yeehaw. I'm a cowboy. That's the only one I can bring in the house because it's the only one that won't leave a welt. <laughs> uh, how do you get your DZ Maxes in Canada? I have no idea what that is. Um, most of that stuff was sent to me by Apulo because he likes watching me build Nerf stuff. <laughs> and then I also have um, the one I can't touch because it is a little too... Um, a little too 
um, close to potentially looking like a, a potentially not a, a real. Um, so that one is all bright colors and we're gonna build that one in a video, not uh, on a stream. But I do have an SBL kit we're gonna build on a stream uh, after Rocky Mountain, so. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, it's a Nerf blaster. I, I built it on stream. If YouTube had a problem with that, I built it on stream. <laughs> We had cowboys. Uh, what, uh, Calgary Stampede. We have cowboys. Uh, do, do, do. Hey, if you want a cocoa press. <laughs> I think these are all prepaid for, though. I think those are all prepaid for. Uh, that one's already finished. Yeah, it is what it is. I'm just trying to figure out how the beacon can now do nozzle probing. That'll be interesting. Also, I love this. I absolutely love how many people are clowning on this fool on Twitter. So for those that don't know, Marquise Brownlee, MKH, MK... MKBHD um, did a video where he basically ripped apart the, uh, the, what is it even called? I don't even know what it's called. It's the humane pin or whatever the heck it's called. It's a dumb little start device sold by some crypto bro who's now a AI bro. Cause all the, all, they all pivoted. Um, all it does is the exact same thing as like, you know, okay, Google. Um, but it doesn't do anything else. It's slow and it's $700 plus a monthly fee. So he ripped it apart. And then this guy who also, you know, you know, small bets. Yeah, this, this is the, this is, you know, the type. That's all I'm going to say is like, oh, I find it distasteful, almost unethical to say this when you have 18 million subscribers. Hard to explain why, but with great reach comes great responsibility. Potentially killing someone else's descent product reeks of carelessness. First, do no harm. Firstly, that's a medical thing. That doesn't apply to YouTube reviewers. Two, um, F that, okay? It, 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 there's plenty of YouTubers out there already that all they do is just promote shit, okay? Th that, there's plenty of people out there already that if, if you want your product to be, you know, oh, it's amazing, buy it. Here's my affiliate link. There's, there's plenty of people out there already that do that. Um, not gonna name names, but there's plenty of people that already do that kind of stuff already. So to be, to, to try and like, you know, get it, put out a little mm, against somebody who, you know, criticizes a part product. Yeah, no, 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 that shit don't fly. And the amount of people clowning on this guy, like 11,000 likes, 3.5 retweets. Yeah. The amount of people that are just retweeting him and just clowning on him is, is hilarious can't call it a scam. It's not a scam. It, the, the product's not a scam. It's just a shit product. There's nothing wrong. Like you can't call it a scam. It does exactly what it does, which is a slower, worse implementation of uh, Google or Android voice AI. That's all it is. And all it, 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 it's chat, B, ch chat GPT in its own thing. The problem is I can go like this and go, ready? Uh, what is it? Google Lens. That and hit Google Lens, and it's like, oh, it's a camera. Like, maybe you don't sell half baked product. I know, I know. <laughs> um, has Zach incorporated? Well, as far as I'm aware, Zach's glasses run on Android. So if he had a camera in there, it would be able to do Google, like, okay, Google, or uh, tie into GPT already because I'm pretty sure his, his glasses run Android. I don't know if they have a cell phone connection because the thing is for AI, you need, you, need, you need a connection to a server for AI. You need internet for AI. You need to offload the processing. You did answer it. Oh, well, I missed it. Science? Okay, it works using science. Okay. Never back tech Kickstarters. Nope. 
They got $250 million in venture capital for this. I could sell you the cheapest, you know, phone off Amazon with an internet connection to chat GPT for $700. And it has a touch screen. It's like, I seen somebody was trying to like hawk a, another startup on Twitter the other day. And it was like, remember, imagine you could have a, a map in your pocket. And it was basically something the size of this that was just one screen with a map on it. And I'm like, they were trying to make it sound like this super thing, like this innovative thing where like you can have a map in your pocket all the time. And everyone's like, bro, that's your cell phone. It already does it. Well, you, this, you know, you don't need to have like this, will, this is smaller and it's more compact. It's like, cool. You could buy standalone GPS units already. Oh, well, uh, like it, you could tell like they were tr talking in a circle, trying to make their product sound good when it obviously isn't. It's like, oh my God. I, I mean, at least we're out of the crypto bro NFT bullshit, but now it's AI bros. Like they just keep pivoting. And my package is still out for delivery. Ugh. Does it have a clip you can attach to a hoodie? You mean a magnet? It's like, oh my god. Such such wondrous technology to have the ability to use a magnet to hold stuff on your clothes. Oh. Oh my god, that that's so innovative. My Prusa sweater's too too thick. This doesn't fit. The magnet doesn't work through it. Um uh, AI bros are almost worth in crypto bros. They're the same. They're the same. It's the same bros. It's the same bros. AI crypto bros. Oh God. Oh God, run away. Isn't crypto like dying again? Oh, Bitcoin's down 2% today. How much is it over the week? Oh, it's down 10% over the past week. Uh, how has it been like, oh God, anyone who thinks like the ups and downs of, of Bitcoin make it a stable currency is, is, oh my God. Just remember Bitcoin was only good if you bought it a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. <laughs> uh without good software. Yeah, that's what it is. You, you get sold on the idea. Remember, you don't have to, remember, the days of free money, interest rates are going up. The days of free money, where you could just start a company and not actually have to make, sell anything. You could just sell the idea of selling something and just keep getting VC funds because money was free, are pretty much over. So you're, yeah, a lot of these are gonna, hopefully. Because remember, yeah, crypto is just a pump and dump. Remember, crypto is a pump and dump. Anyone who promotes crypto, I will never associate with. So you can stop asking me to come on your podcast. Um, anyone who promotes crypto, it, it knows it's a pump and dump and they're just trying to, you know, get you to buy the bag. So you get left holding the bag. Um, it, 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 it's, it's a scam. Let's be honest. Nobody uses crypto for anything other than pump and dump and gambling and illegal stuff. So it is what it is. And Bitcoin's defense, all everything fluctuates. Gas fluctuates. Yeah. But guess what? At least, you know, it's tangible. Yes, money is not really tangible, but it has the entire U.S. economy to back it up. Crypto is just if, if, if my currency was dependent on an edgelord who runs a shitty social media site and what he tweets can affect my my value. It, it no. Uh, yeah, it's only value is what investors decide. Yeah, and how many crypto pools and whatnot have failed horribly over the year? Uh, Bit, Bit, uh, FTC, uh, or FTC, uh, FTX, uh, Binance, uh, all of them, all of them, all, all junk. They're all scams. They're all scams. Let's be honest. They're all scams. They're all pump and dump scams. And it's just trying to get people to hold the bag. It's just, hey, yeah, yeah get in on this. Come on, come on, come on. I, I've got some beans I can sell you. Crypto is propped up by ransomware hackers. I believe it. Be fair, the well, yeah, like everything is in in, in 
anything could be manipulated, let's be honest. But, you know, I'd rather have, you know, the ability of my stuff to pay for stuff to be tied to, you know, an economy, an actual, like, tangible thing that, you know, you can kind of go predict somewhat and kind of, like, rely on versus, hey, if the computer is just, you know, if a solar flare just goes, bleh, it's all wiped out because crypto is only valued what you say it's valued. There's nothing to actually back it up. It's only worth anything when you convert it to a fiat currency or you buy drugs with it. <laughs> uh, NFT. Oh my God. I'm so glad NFTs crashed. That was the funniest, like stupidest thing I've ever seen. Line go up. Go watch the, 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 the line go up video. What is, let me, let me line go up. Line go up. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Go watch the folding ideas video. Line goes up. It basically completely eviscerates NFTs. Because remember, you don't own the NFT. You own a spot on a blockchain that goes, that's a receipt for the NFT. And you don't even really own it. <laughs> don't right click. My monkey JPEGs. My monkey JPEGs. In, in, invest in 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 in, in flexi flexi gecko invest invest in flexi gecko this is tangible at least uh and then like oh, hey you know if you buy if you buy a skin in one game it'll work in all your games thanks to nfts meanwhile um bungie is going why the hell would we uh import uh skins from call of duty that use a different game engine and have us you know our, spend our time and our money getting our employees to, you know, make our game accept skins from other games and other platforms. It, no, no. And guess what? You don't need NFTs for that kind of anything. You don't even need NFTs for that. It's just something tied to your account. It's the same thing as like a, a freaking item in World of Warcraft. It's just tied to your account. <laughs> uh, NFTs are like getting groceries, but only buying the receipt. Exactly. Uh, a fool and his money are easily separated. Plant tulips. Exactly. Guys, it's all about tulips. Invest in tulips. Don't bring WoW into this. Yeah. Is WoW good anymore? Is, is WoW good now? I know it goes through ups and downs, but is, is WoW back on being good or bad? I can't remember. I haven't played since, like, Classic. Like, original Classic launch. Uh... Hey, tons of millionaires. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what YouTube channel. It was some, like, YouTube channel I watched where they just did dumb mods on cars. Like, put, like, Harbor Freight engines in Hondas and stuff like that. And then the channel stopped making videos for, like, a year. And then it came back and it's like, yeah, the guy who owned the channel, like, basically made a killing in Bitcoin um, and completely peaced out and he gave us the channel. <laughs> so he's off being a millionaire doing whatever and now we have the channel. I'm like, okay. Oh, who are you guys? Uh, Tes oh, Tesla is horribly overvalued. Tesla is horribly overvalued. It's crashing right now. Tes Tesla's Tesla's done. Tesla is is BlackBerry. Tesla is the BlackBerry of electric cars. I bet they were the first ones to come out with a smartphone or an electric car that actually worked, and then everyone else went. Cool. Now the people that actually know how to, you know, run companies are going to take over and uh, we're going to smack you and you're done. <laughs> because I've built molds for Tesla. I've worked with Tesla engineers. I would never buy a Tesla. I will never buy a Tesla. I worked, I worked with, I, I built molds for most automotive companies. If you have a car built in North America between about 2014 and probably about 2002, I most likely built a mold that made a part for your car. So I've worked with most of these companies, or like people from these companies. I was a guy on the floor, but I still, you know, interacted with people. Um, and Tesla, I will never buy a Tesla. Uh, anyone buy a ticket on the ride to Mars? I will say I like SpaceX because SpaceX has the advantage of being uh, falling under ITAR and having a shit ton of regulations it has to follow. So Elon can't do Elon things with SpaceX as much as he wants to, other than make crazy timelines 
um, that way overestimate things, SpaceX is actually doing pretty good because Elon can't do the kind of things he does to the other companies he owns. So. Uh, yeah, te yeah. How's Tesla doing so far? They, they just laid off like 10% of their workforce. Tesla stock. Um, let's see, how's Tesla doing six months? Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Here to date. Oh, that's not good. Five years. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Max. Yeah, I got a feeling it going down. And then somebody's going to buy it. Probably Ford. I don't know. Um, yeah, SpaceX engineers love the fact that he bought twi Twitter because he's off dicking around with that. You can't even run a, a, a micro blogging site without it falling apart. Um, so what time is it? It's getting one o'clock. I got to I got to get. I got to do some stuff before picking up the little guy from school. So I'm going to have to end the stream early. So we'll end it at one. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about before we wrap it up? Any any other topics you want to go over? Th today's stream was just a hangout stream because I got to I've got to get ready for the Rocky Mountain. And I didn't want to like get halfway through something today. Say, you forgot to say his profile. I will give him credit. Apparently, he is actually pretty decent at rocket science. Um, according to some interviews with engineers, he actually does know rocket science to a pretty good degree. Um, so he can actually speak on authority in regards to some of the stuff with SpaceX and like the engines and whatnot. But yeah, am I doing live cards? I'm going to try. I'm going to try and do a live stream. We'll see. Anyone else? Um, a few people did, but if they have one, they'll make it known if they want to. Um, War on Phoenix info. Um, there will be one at Rocky Mountain, as far as I'm aware. Hopefully. Uh, you might have something. Cool. Make sure it fits in a bag. I'm, I'm purposely underpacking because every time I go to an event, I always bring back more than I went with. So I purposely underpack lately so that I have more room to fit stuff. Okay, Mark. I mean, let's be honest, Falcon 9 has completely revolutionized getting stuff up into space and Starship is actually kind of panning out to be able to do what it says. Because remember, Starship is actually fully functional. The, the reuse part of Starship isn't, but the ability to get 100 tons in a low Earth orbit, they've proven it can do that. Starship is functional. They're just refining it now. I'm not buying stuff from space. None of us are buying stuff from SpaceX unless you have Starlink. I know a few people personally that have Starlink and they love it. So because it was either Starlink or basically DSL with spotty service because it's over uh, the air. Oh, working with space. Oh, God. Yeah. As somebody who. Yeah. I keep this in my toolbox because I can pull it out. Yes. Focus, focus. Yes, working with SpaceX is a pain in the ass. I built a mold for it. Do you have a Starlink terminal that's rectangular? I built the mold for it. Or I worked on the team that built the mold for it, more properly saying. Huh. <sighs> Steve is bringing his Phoenix in a cargo van. Yeah. <laughs> we, I, I think, I'm pretty sure we kept the table we built last year to put the Phoenixes on. Somebody, somebody on, who's local to Rocky Mountain, who's on the Warren team, has like the table we built. <laughs> uh, SpaceX dropped the price per ton to orbit to the point where they can't really be competed with. The only reason Star, Star, Starship, or correction, SpaceX has competition because they have to. Um, ULA, okay, hopefully uh, Blue Origin, or not Blue Origin, uh, New Glenn pans out, ULA. The thing is, you have to have competition. Yes, SpaceX is currently the best way to get stuff into space. It's the cheapest way to get stuff into space. It's the most reliable way to get stuff into space. SpaceX is good, but the problem is you can't just rely on SpaceX because if something happens to SpaceX, then you're screwed, okay? It's how we get in the Thingiverse situation. You need to have competition. So 
the US government basically props up other space companies like ULA and whatnot. You know, they can't deliver the amount of tonnage to orbit as regular as SpaceX. They do have a history of being able to reliably get stuff into space. They're not as cheap, but they are a secondary source of getting stuff into space. You need to have more than one way to get your stuff into space for national security reasons. So you, you, you have to keep those engineers employed. Otherwise, they're going to go to other places or potentially other countries, countries that you may not want to have a space program. So you need to keep those engineers that have that skill employed so you have access to those people and the skill is kept up to date and you keep them from potentially selling their skills to parties you may not want to have those skills available to. So. Tony Bruno. Tony Bruno is cooler because I've talked. Oh, OK. I've, I've, I've had a Twitter conversation with Tony Bruno about something. He actually replied to a tweet and then I replied to that tweet and then he replied to that tweet. It was great. It was about 3D printed rocket engines. It was actually really cool. So, yes, Tony Bruno is cooler than Elon Musk. You're attacking a weird audience. Daniel, welcome to the club. This is how the chat streams always go. It's just random. I haven't printed anything in like five days. I've got all my stuff printed for the current projects. I got to print the stuff for the SBL, but I'll do that after Rocky Mountain. Um, ULA Centaur. Yeah, it, like obviously there's different efficiencies with the different systems. Like Falcon 9 is really good for getting satellites up, but you know, outside of Earth orbit or certain orbits, it's not as, as good. Um, yeah, Falcon Heavy can do um, more more mission profiles. The problem with Falcon Heavy is the fairing size. Yeah, the Falcon Heavy fairing size is the same fairing size as the Falcon 9. Yes, they are working on a stretched fairing for some um, Air Force payloads or Space Force payloads or whatever. Um, but that's the problem with the Falcon Heavy. Yes, it can get something heavier into orbit, but it can't get something bigger into orbit. So. Uh, for that plug, USB for what, what plug? Like, are you talking about the laptop? We already talked about, are, are you watching the beginning of the stream, Selge? <laughs> Read the comment from Beads? Where, what comment from Beads? We've never been to space either. I'm gonna assume you're trolling at this point. I'm just gonna assume you're trolling, Beads. Um, that or you really went down that TikTok pseudoscience rabbit hole and I feel sorry for you because that's, that, once you start falling for the pseudoscience, you start falling for the other stuff, and the next thing you know, you're st storming a government building wearing a bearskin hat. So, like, get off the pipeline. It, it's an actual pipeline. It's a known, actual, proven pipeline that pseudo pseudoscience leads into a bunch of other radical stuff. So get off the pipeline, uh, delete your Facebook, get a lawyer, hit the gym or something. I don't know. Um, Benchy? Benchy! So yeah, I think we're gonna call it there. Let's let's do the giveaway now. So if you haven't entered for your chance to win some filament from Polymaker, uh, you'll have another chance on Tuesday. Because we're gonna do the giveaway right now. Because I'm actually starving and I need some food. And I gotta hit up the post office before picking up the little guy from school. I think I have everything packed. I, I, I gotta go through the clothes again. I always don't bring one shirt. So if I'm gone for five days, I only bring four shirts because I know I always end up getting a shirt at these events. Tim Horn, ew, Tim Horn suck. Um, Needs a vertical integration building to get some of the spy satellites. Oh yeah, yeah, the, NR the NRLL stuff, yeah. You pay a pretty penny for that. Um, I need a number between Rocky and Mountain. Somebody give me a number between Rocky and Mountain. Uh, three, three works. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, I'm serious that if you're not really researching, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Beads, I'm just gonna just get you out of the channel. Goodbye. 
Uh, okay. Wade! Congratulations, Wade. You have won yourself a spool of filament from Polymaker. Um, let me, uh, okay, let me just make sure here. One second. Please, okay, good. Every now and then somebody puts like a, a one word name in and it's like I get three people with it. It's like, ah, shit, which way? Uh, Beads living on the moon. Well, he can go live there because he's gone. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't put up with that kind of crap because usually there's a pattern and I don't like the pattern. Uh, so yeah, so congratulations, Wade. You will get an email from me after the stream ends with information on how to collect your filament from Polymaker. Woo! Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So that is that. Let me actually go ahead and take care of that right now. Let me send this email out so I can make sure that's done because I may talk for a little bit now just to make sure, do the wrap up. Because nothing is more annoying than thinking you did something and realizing you didn't. So let me... Oh! Eh. You didn't all win, only Wade won. I accidentally copied the entire list of people. Wade. There you go, Wade. I don't know what that mountain range is. Cool. There's a few mountain ranges I don't know about, apparently. Send email to Wade or sent. Good old templates, good old templates. Also, I do this because I, I like to see how many people leave the stream once the draw happens. So usually I like to, every now and then I like to run the stream for a little bit after the draw to see how many people were only here for the draw. It's kind of funny. It's sad, but it's funny. Okay, Wade, you should have got your email. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Do your own research. I mean, you can go out and look at the moon. It's not hard. It's actually really easy. You look at the moon, it wobbles because of the way orbits are. So you actually can see more than half the moon because as the moon moves around, you can actually see like the sides a little bit more than sometimes because the moon actually does like a little wobble um, from your point of view. Um, so it's actually really easy to prove the moon is round. Also, you know, we've known about it since antiquity because of wells and different points on Earth, different wells and whatnot. Um, different times of the day, you can see the bottom, some you can't. Yeah, we... we... <sighs> It's simple math. It's simple math. It's all math. Every time somebody says like, how were we able to go to the moon with the power of a calculator and we can't do it anymore? One, we accepted a lot of risk back then that we don't accept anymore. Um, pretty much every Apollo mission almost ended in fa complete failure. Um, but in one way or another, we just lucked out hugely. Um, but old space was sketchy AF. Uh, and two, it's all just basic math. I mean, for, for those that have played Kerbal Space Program, you can eyeball landing on the moon. All you need to know is the target velocity and at what point of the orbit you need to engage the engine. That's it. Space is just math. You don't need, you can do a TI-83 to do the math. You don't need actually crazy, I mean, hell, a lot of, what is it, Apollo 13, they did a bunch of it on the freaking slide rule, mid-flight. It, it's not hard to do space scientifically. It's just basic math. Well, somewhat advanced math, but it's it's just math. You just need a computer that can do math, which we've had for a long time. So you don't need a lot of processing power to do space because it's just math. You need this velocity at this time for this amount of time to reach this trajectory. That's it. That's it. That's rocket science. It's literally just math. <laughs> um, so you don't need crazy high powerful computers to do that. Now, nowadays we simulate a lot of stuff. So you need processing power to simulate stuff. Um, but it's still like, you know, for those that played Kerbal Space Program back before they had nodes and all that, how do you get to the moon? You get into orbit on the equator. And then as soon as your orbit brings you around and you see the moon just pop up around the horizon, you fire your engine until you reach whatever the velocity you need. And then you turn the engine off and congratulations, you're on a lunar intercept trajectory. Simple as that. You can eyeball that shit. Yes, Kerbal Space Program isn't real life, but... but close you're going to get in a video game, let's be honest. So, but yeah, you don't need crazy high powerful computers to get to the moon. It's just, back then, we were just willing to strap people into tin cans and risk it. We can't do that anymore. Bad PR. Uh, Lawrence Management is Congress. Yeah, it's money. It's, yeah, once you start trying to land on stuff and go through atmospheres, then it gets complicated. Look how many 
uh, missions to Mars have failed over the years. Let's be honest. It, it, it's complicated, but it's not hard. You just need the skill and the money. <laughs> You know, monkey. Did we? We never sent monkeys to the moon, did we? We sent them into space, but they never went to the moon. I don't think. Yeah, yeah. The first, yeah, the first missions to space were just let's just take the missile with the nuke, take the nuke off, and shove a guy in a tin can. Uh, so cyber truck strapping people into tin cans, sir. It's not tin. It's stainless steel. That isn't stainless. Uh, some good stuff on the computer. Yeah, the Smarter Everyday videos are really good on uh, the Apollo stuff. Yeah, Apollo, multiple shuttles. The shuttle program was a j joke because the, what happened was, for those that don't know, the shuttle was supposed to be this really with a much smaller, more efficient vehicle. And then um, the Air Force said, no, we need to be able to have it have the capability that it can launch from Vandenberg on a polar orbit, capture a satellite on its first orbit, capture a Russian satellite or a Soviet satellite on its first orbit and then land back at Vandenberg in one single orbit. Like that was one of the mission parameters that the space shuttle had to do. So they had to make it massive so it could fit a satellite in the back and so that it could do all this like the uh, so it can change like as it enters the atmosphere it had a lot of um, cr not cross cross wind cross it, it could travel like it could it could flip sideways. So you know because the earth spins under an orbit right so you take off here well, as you come around again, you're now over here. And when it comes in, it has to be able to like get back to Vandenberg over there. So a lot of what the space shuttle ended up having to do was dictated by national security reasons that it never ended up having to do. So they basically designed a truck for heavy hauling when it should have just been a pickup. It was really, yeah. That's kind of why we've gone back to capsules. Bank up the Russians. Yep, that was one thing it did. It was actually a horribly inefficient vehicle. It was supposed to like, it was supposed to be able to like easy refurbish, like refurbish it in an airplane hangar and launch like every week. And it's like, nope, it can launch four times a year and it's a billion dollars a launch. Very, very efficient. Meanwhile, you got like Falcon 9 boosters that are doing 20, 20 rides up and down. <laughs> they don't even clean them. Okay, we're gonna call it there. Um, because I am hungry. I'm actually really hungry. I need to get food. Okay, um, so yeah, we're gonna call it there. Um, huge shout out to Polymaker for the spool of filament. We give away this stream and every stream. Links for them and more in the video description. Some of them are affiliate links, don't cost anything extra. Go a long way in supporting the channel. Um, also a huge shout out to anyone that donated to the channel, give the memberships to others, or became members of the channel yourself. I thank you. I would not be able to do the things I do, create the content I create without your continued support. You make it all possible. Uh, if you are making it out to Rocky Mountain, say hi. Um, just be aware, um, in person, I'm very, I'm running all over the place at these events. So if you come say hi and I'm like, hey, cool. And I, I leave, I'm usually in the, like the middle of something. And this is gonna sound, if I'm in the middle of a conversation with somebody or eating, wait a minute, <laughs> it's, it's really awkward. Um, but yeah, if you do see me, say hi. Um, yeah, it's an event. I'll be there all weekend. I'll be there Saturday. I'll be there Sunday. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you shout out to LDO because they're sponsoring my trip. So LDO is going to be on everything. So I got to find my LDO shirt and pack that actually. Good idea. Okay, we're calling it there. Uh, again, no regular stream Friday, no regular stream Saturday. I'm going to try and stream this weekend. So make sure, join the Discord, link in the description. I'll do an at everyone when I go live. Um, I don't know exactly what time, and I'll put it out on Twitter and all that, too. Um, so, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your week. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. And I will hopefully see some of you this weekend. Goodbye.